All right, I'm going live finally. I think that the uh, YouTube app, I don't know, can, can you guys hear me? Let me hear me if anybody is on yet. <clears throat> I see I got five people watching. Let me know. Hey, Aaron, can you hear me okay or am I quiet? Okay, you can hear me. Okay, awesome. Good. So I don't know. Usually, guys, what I do to set up for a, a live stream is uh, I have my – I use the YouTube app on my cell phone, and it's recording while I'm actually reading all the comments on my desktop so that way I can actually see it. <laughs> and before, the way YouTube was, it wouldn't let you um, just use Google Chrome and your webcam on your computer to do a live stream. You had to like download these apps that were actually, in my opinion, very difficult to um, operate. So <clears throat> I'm glad you guys are here. <laughs> Sorry about all that craziness that was happening. Um, everybody say thank you to my father-in-law who I guess told you guys to come over to this. <laughs> uh, this one It's getting really frustrating. Anyway, I want to set this uh, this live stream up right and... I want to go over some epoxy do's and don'ts, but really this is a time for us all to sit down and talk, have a good time, and to um, for you guys to post up any questions that you have uh, on, and on any of the projects you have. Maybe you had some issues here and there, but go, feel free to type in the comments and let me know exactly what you guys um, need help with. I'm going to go ahead and read some comments really quick. Uh, Aaron says, hey, dog, what's up, Aaron? Lost Sailor. Um, Renee, Casey Roberts, Eric. Hey guys, how are you doing? I'm glad you guys showed up. Uh, thanks for watching. Sorry about all the technical difficulties. <clears throat> uh, first things first. Uh, I hope you guys like the video I posted. Sorry, uh, I posted two days, I guess yesterday. Sorry, it took so long to get a video out. I've been working in California, um, on the, on the railroad. They're implementing a new system down there. And, or over there, and um, so I've been gone for about was it about nine or ten days, something like that. About nine days. Uh, it, Jennifer says, "Hey again, hey Jennifer, how you doing?" Excuse me. Cliff Nelson, what's going on, Cliff? If you see Cliff in the comment section, guys, Cliff's one of my best friends. Known him my entire life. He's a great guy. Hey, Cliff, uh, Cliff says, how do you pour resin without it spilling <laughs> out of your cup and making, mis making a mistake? <laughs> Terrible. Uh, you need to not be so aggressive with your, with your drill mixer. Um, Aaron says, <clears throat> I want to I pour a tabletop and layer colors side by side. How bad will they run together? So, Aaron, I've actually seen this a couple times on some videos. Um, what you need to do, if you were just to pour them in, um, they will run together pretty badly. However, if you can create some dams, maybe with cardboard or something like that, let's say you're trying to, if you had a river like this and you're trying to divvy up different colors like that, I would pour them in, let them set up for a little while, then remove the dams and that way it's that since the epoxy has solidified a little bit, it won't run together as much. So, um, I would say that would be the best way to do that. <clears throat> Nick's Nick Sean says, woohoo back in business. Yeah, Nick. So, sorry. I didn't reply to your text. Uh, been trying to figure this thing out and finally it's working. So, um, hopefully it's, it's just as good as it used to be. Um, you know, with our crappy Wi-Fi. <laughs> Cliff says, uh, I meant mixing. Okay, Cliff. Uh, so make sure that you have the right mixture and you mix it slowly at first and then and if you get the hang of it, you can crank up the speed. Um, yeah, yeah, then Yadinivec, 
He says, howdy from California. How you doing? Slick Table says, there we go. It's been a while. Hey, Slick Tables. Hey, man, I've been um, looking at your uh, some of the stuff you've been doing. You've been doing a great job. Everybody, I know I've probably given them a shout out before, but if you go to um, Instagram and Facebook, check out Slick Tables. He's got some really cool stuff over there. Go check him out as well. Um, <clears throat> Richard Collins has got it now. Aaron says, you the man. Rusty Merkin says, Merkin here. Desk is looking great, buddy. Hey, Rusty, how you been? I haven't seen you on in a while. Um, how's life been? So, guys, uh, with the with the um, epoxy desk, I wanted to go over a few things that we had, a few issues on here and there. Uh, I noticed some people have, uh, have commented that uh, the way the diamonds are shaped, they're not exactly – uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Symmetrical. Yeah, thank you. Symmetrical. They're not exactly symmetrical. And I did lay it out to be symmetrical. However, because my of my inaccurate cutting style, plus the way the none of the boards were straight or the same thickness. And by the time I've laid them out, the diamonds were a little off. So, but the cool thing is, if you look down the desk. The middle one is pr almost perfect, but the outside two are um, a little off one direction and the opposite direction. So it actually <laughs> it works out. It, the whole table is symmetrical. <laughs> uh, Jeremy P says picked up a nice piece of maple at a garage sale this week for ten bucks. Hey, uh, that's that's great. Ten dollars. That's I mean that's almost free. Uh, how big was the piece, Jeremy? Uh, Lost Sailor says, Nathan, are you doing a cheapskate challenge? Yes. Uh, let me get to my calendar really quick. I forgot the date. Um, excuse me. Really quickly. So, was it the end of the month? Okay. So, guys. Um, I don't have it written down here, but yes. So if you are looking for a new cheapskate challenge, we are doing a new cheapskate challenge. It will be all you have about four weeks or so, three three weeks. Um, it'll be at the end of this month, August thirty first, and um, <clears throat> I want to get the rules set up, but pretty much similar rules as last time, except for there will not be a um, a price difference. There will be uh, some of the uh, rules, you have to use certain materials, okay? So I want to get this laid out for you first before we say um, go ahead on the Cheapskate Challenge. It will be the 31st of this month. But if you guys, tomorrow I have the official rules written out. If you go on my YouTube channel to the Community tab, the rules will be written there tomorrow. So look look out for that. Rusty Morgan says, switch, switch me to afternoon, still trying to adjust. Yeah. <laughs> I hate when they uh, switch your <clears throat> uh, the time you need to work because when I was in California, obviously three hours different, but they had me working days and then they switched to nights in the same day. So one time we worked um, for 12 hours, had an hour off pretty much, and then worked an additional eight hours. It was crazy. Oh, Jeremy P said it was five and a half feet tall. What does that say? Yeah, five to six feet tall and 12 to 16 inches wide or so. That's crazy. Lori Wiley from Virginia. Hey, Lori, how's it going? <clears throat> uh, Yad, Yadinivek, sorry if I mispronounced your name. Um, he says, I was thinking about using epoxy on a corn house, cornhole set. What are your thoughts? Will it hold up well? Yes. Yeah, the, the epoxy itself will hold up well, but if the cornhole boards are stored outside, the epoxy will yellow a little bit. Um, all epoxy yellows from the sun. Um, some epoxies do it more than others. Uh, I would just say if you stick, if you um, stay away from any kind of light colors in the background, like white or cream, you won't notice the yellowing as much.
Oh, Jennifer says August 9th. Uh, no, Jennifer, so it's uh, August 31st. It'll be at the end of this month. Sorry if I said end of the week. I meant end of the month. <laughs> Uh, Gunnar Norum says, hi from Norway, new to resin, looking forward to try it out for pocket letters and signs and possibly for a clear coat finish. All right, Gunnar. Yeah. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them down in the comments and I'll get to them as, as best I can. Uh, second star of the rice is hi from Alberta. Uh, <laughs> up in Canada. Woo. Is it cold up there? What's the weather like there? Okay. Kevin, thanks, Kevin. <laughs> uh, uh, so, Kevin, um, no, no problem at all. If you need some help, uh, don't feel free to just leave all your comment, uh, your questions down in the comments. I appreciate it. Uh, Brian says, "Good, good evening to all from LaSalle, Ontario." <clears throat> Aaron Hungate says, "Just had my first real boof with epoxy. Redid my parents' kitchen and used the last piece of black backsplash." for an epoxy dish to put plates on didn't mix enough man yeah that's terrible uh so aaron i hate i hate when that happens uh, i have also done that as a matter of fact later on this week my my in-laws are here hanging out with us and he has a table that he's it, not that he didn't mix it correctly but that he must have gotten a bad batch of epoxy because it just will not cure um and so we've been over the possible issues but it seems like the only thing that seems to be right is that it was a bad batch and it's terrible so we got to go in and plane it all back off to finish if you guys remember we were in detroit doing the river table it was on that table that's why you guys haven't seen as much here recently so sorry about that <clears throat> second star of the rice is 34 degrees celsius up in alberta alberta <laughs> alberta <laughs> uh so what is what is that in Fahrenheit? I wonder. Seems pretty warm, I guess. Um, so Weston asks, will the fix that you used on your table need to have the wood sealed on the edges of a river table like you have done with stone coat and other pores? Uh, Weston, it, if you have the right temperature, so in my shop it actually um, – was a little too warm. I poured in like 90 degrees. So it, 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 um, cured way too quickly. Uh, I would, I would say though, that as far as bubbles were concerned, I only sealed the top and the epoxy filled in and there were edges that were not sealed and it still didn't create very many bubbles. So, um, the, the best thing to do is not to seal the edges structurally wise, but bubble wise, I would always seal the edges. So the best way to take care of that would be to seal the edges of the wood that are exposed to the epoxy. And before that epoxy becomes hard, so like it's still um, not fully cured, the texture would be more like honey. At that point, you would want to pour your um, casting epoxy. So that way it's sealed, but they can also have a chemical bond as well as a mechanical bond, and you should be good that way. <clears throat> Rusty Mergen says, were you able to pour six inches thick with that new epoxy? So Rusty, no, it's um, they, they only recommend pouring up to three inches thick, which is really cool. I mean, <laughs> not very many people need to go more than uh, three. Uh, but yeah, that, that total boat thick set only goes to three inches, pour, uh, according to them. Lost Sailor says, I just sold my first few epoxy projects to a high-end gift shop. Couldn't have done it without you. Thanks for helping support my family, LOL. Hey, Lost Sailor, not, not a problem at all, man. I'm glad that you actually are um, uh, doing well with your business. That, that is great. And I'm glad that I was able to help you guys do that. <clears throat> uh, Renee Porter says, uh, Lost Sailor, we want to see some pics. Yes, we do. So, hey, uh, do me a favor. Um, you guys, uh, Lost Sailor, if you want to go over to Instagram and um, send some pictures in, I'd be happy to uh, make a video and post them up on YouTube. Take a little LaCroix break here.
L.A. Croix in the house. So um, <clears throat> another thing that I did different with the with the desk is because I was using a bunch of boards that were warped and they're not the same dimension. Um, and what I did was I used a piece of MDF as a base to, and I nailed the boards to it. And so far it's actually worked really well. The epoxy seeped in between the boards and cr kind of made it all one piece. So that bottom piece will not come off. So the bottom piece that was technically the bottom of the mold will, um, well, it's part of the table now. And so I had this dilemma, like, what do I do with the edge of the table so that you won't see that bottom piece of the form that's now part of the table? And uh, my father-in-law came up with a great idea. Because we are using um, some metal file cabinets and shelf as, as the legs, it'll be a floating desk, but it's going to look like they're the legs. They are uh, black um, sheet metal and steel. Uh, they look really nice. They're not like the you know old school filing cabinets. They're actually pretty cool looking. But we decide we're going to go with a, a piece of aluminum bar and paint it flat black to match. And we'll have some pretty cool um, hardware that holds it and makes it look more industrial. So I think that's what we're going to do with that. So as a matter of fact, later on this week, I'm going to try to post by Friday. But what we're going to do is sand the table, the desk down, put a finished coat of, of stone coat countertops epoxy on the top and get some piece a piece of aluminum to trim it out and we will install it in there. So hopefully that's what gets done this week and uh, it's going to look really, really cool. I'm really excited for you guys to see it. Um, and I wanted to <clears throat> ask you, ask you guys too, what were your thoughts of the, of the desk? Do you like when I do a series of videos or do you like everything all in one? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Rusty Mer Merkin says, hit that like button. That's right, guys. If you guys do me a favor, hit the like button on this video. It will post it higher up in the queue so that more people can check us out. We can add to the community. Michael Underwood says, you're the man. Always great tips and formative videos. Thanks. Not a problem. Aaron says, yes, series. Okay. That's good. That's what I thought. You know, I, I do my best to try to uh, break everything down so that um, – you know, I try not to miss all the steps because I want you guys to succeed. And whatever mistakes you see me make, hopefully you guys will be able to skip those mistakes and learn from my videos. So that's kind of why I keep it to a series instead of one video as I can cram more information in a series than I can in, a one, in one single video. So, um, yeah, you guys are saying series. So that, that's awesome. Uh, Lindy says, I like everything done in one video. Uh so Lindy's Manor. Hey, um, I also I will I will do that every once in a while. I try to put one in one video, um, especially if it's a smaller project. But um, I think that uh, I think it would benefit more people if we do it in series. Also, it'll help me <laughs> uh, um, put more content out for you guys because if I don't break it down, it'll take me longer to complete something, obviously, and then. After editing and posting a video, it'll be a longer stretch of time. I would rather have some content out to you guys instead of having you wait for long periods of time. Get what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, Lindy's Manor says, okay, thanks, man. No problem, Lindy's Manor. Seriously. Uh, Aaron Hungay says, for your follow followers, series is best, but trying to get new followers a full video is smart business decision. Hey, Aaron, I appreciate that. I will um, I will do my best to try to mix it up. You know. Uh, so that way everybody can, will be happy. Uh, Michael Underwood says who sells the best priced epoxy? Well, that's, uh, it's difficult. However, if you've seen in the, in the past few videos, I've, I've used, um, it's called super clear, uh, epoxy. I'll have to leave a link down. I'll edit this video later and leave a link down in the description. But if you go, uh, in the first video of, or excuse me, the second video of the desk build, um, I left a link of the epoxy that I used in that one. It was super thin. It was actually a really good epoxy. It didn't leave any bubbles or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> and you can pour it six inches thick. That one was the most reasonably priced for casting epoxy. Usually casting epoxy is more expensive because, 
Um, it has different additives in it to make it cure slower. You can pour it all at one time. It has a lot of benefits. Usually, though, it's um, more expensive. So that one is actually around, I think for a gallon, was around $100. Whereas if you compare it to Total Boat and Stone Coat Countertops, that's around $165 a gallon. And if you go really high end, Ecopoxy, I think is around 200 I mean, it'll be less if you bought a lot at one time, but I think if you bought a single gallon, it was a little over $200 for Ecopoxy. <clears throat> uh, Jacob Sloan says, big hello from Australia. How's it going, Jacob? Uh, Lindy's Manor says, casting epoxy is what is used for river tables or the table you made. Okay, so yes, for the tables that I've made and river tables, um, as well as the desk, anything that uh, requires a thick pour that you are um, encapsulating something in it, uh, you need to use casting epoxy. If you're just using it as a finish for the top of your projects, that at that point you would use a countertop epoxy or a tabletop epoxy. Uh, Aaron says, I get mine on Amazon. Not sure what brand it is. Never had major issues, but I'm just doing tabletops. Yeah, see, I mean, you can use a lower price epoxy if you're only doing tabletops, like a thin pour over the top. Um, but I would be careful. There are some brands that are less expensive that don't have um, <clears throat> the same scratch resistance, UV resistance, and um, also food safe. And what I mean by food safe is incidental food contact. Um, you don't want to necessarily makes like a bowl that you eat out of, or you definitely don't want to put something in the microwave made out of epoxy or anything like that. Um, incidental food contact is okay. Uh, even, even that cutting board that I made, um, you know, as long as you wash it and things like that, a lot of people have warned me against the cutting board idea. Um, I would just say that, you know, try to <laughs> try to use another cutting board instead of using uh, the one that, is made with epoxy. However, you can, it's okay, it's food safe. Just make sure you clean it and you're not scraping little, you know, pieces of epoxy into your food. So, um, get back to some comments here. It says, second star of the right says, I've been thinking about displaying flies for fly fishing in epoxy. That's really cool. <laughs> That'd be cool. It would kind of like um, enhance their the little flies. I think it'd be, look really, really cool. Uh, Jennifer says Total Boat has some good prices and nice kits set up. Yes, as as a matter of fact, if you go to Total Boat's website, you can go over there and uh, they do have kits. As a matter of fact, when they sent me a kit, they had the epoxy, they had mixing cups, they had stir sticks, they had gloves, and they sent me a hat too, which I'm wearing in the video. You guys can check it out. Um. <clears throat> Aaron says, should say dresser tops. I like to ref refinish old dressers. That's really cool. Um, I <laughs> have a video, uh, Aaron. So I don't know if you saw the video that me and my, me and my wife redid a dresser for my uh, niece's bedroom. Um, that was, that's one of the first ones I've ever done. My wife actually likes to redo furniture as well, refinish furniture. Um, she does a really good job at it too. Um, but uh, I don't know if you guys saw that video as well. Yeah, Aaron, it's it's way back in there. It's one of my older videos. Um, but yeah, we kind of went from an old brown dresser. We we painted it. It was kind of beat up, but um, it was a cool like two day little project. Kevin says, "Sorry, man, gotta go. Good night. All right, man. I'll see you later. Thanks for." Hanging out with us tonight. Uh, is I I don't recognize your handle there, but this is your first time. We really appreciate you coming out, <clears throat> guys. You have if you have any more questions, leave them in the leave it in the comment here. I'll try to get to them as best as I can. Um, so uh, I want to just uh, let you guys know that I'll be posting up another video this weekend. So if you guys be on the lookout for that. Um, if you guys, uh, most of you guys I know probably have your notifications on. Um, make sure that you ring the bell for all notifications so that you guys get notified anytime I post a new video. That way you guys can see it. Um, 
And if you guys don't have any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and end this live stream right now and go hang out with my family. Um, I, I see one more question here. It says, second star to the right says, Stone Coke countertops was just on sailing. What is it? Sailing the spaces in between. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, Alex Wallace says, what do you recommend using to hold down lightweight woods or smaller woods? Um, uh, Alex Wallace. Okay, great, great question. So usually what I do is I have a few small blocks that I have packing tape wrapped all the way around. And I put those on top of the wood, a few places down on my slabs, and I use uh, bar clamps to clamp it down to, excuse me, to the table. Uh, that way the wood doesn't float. All right, guys. Uh, I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me tonight. Sorry that it took so long for me to get the live stream up. But, hey, now we have a new way to um, live stream, which is really cool. Gives me a second option. But you guys have been awesome and been, been patient. I really appreciate it. And with that, guys, I want to say... Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for being here tonight. And I will see you on the next one. Later, guys.